Kevin Knox back again. Uh, we're going to start with the next step of the build. We've already gone through the blank and the mechanics of the blank and how we can modify the action to to best get it to uh, to be where we want in the modifications, whether it's off of the tip or off of the butt. Now we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how we put uh, our grips on the rods. For this rod, the rear grip is going to be a long 18-inch uh, EVA rear grip. Uh, what I've done is I have already reamed it out a little bit more to give me a little bit better opening because the, the OD of this blank, the outside diameter of this blank, is rather stout. So um, it's going to be, a, uh, it's gonna be a, a monumental task here to, to get this on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the camera so I'll be out of the picture but you'll be able to see the rod and uh, how we're putting it on. The first thing that we're going to do in this step, uh, the, the grip will come down to about this section. Once that happens, I will, um, I, I will t make a visual mark of where that is. I'm going to put epoxy from that point all the way down the blank. What that will do is aid in lubricating and sliding this EVA all the way down. It will also um, ensure that we've got good, uh, a good coat of epoxy underneath so that this never comes loose again. So I'm going to modify the camera. and. Uh, get that to where it needs to be so bear with me a second and we'll get going on this alright so we've got the camera set, we've got the blank put this grip on I'm going to make a little visual of where the blank needs to be covered from, that, from this point down so what I will do is liberally apply the epoxy this is two parts slow cure epoxy uh, gives me about 45 minutes to an hour of working time and then she starts setting up on me pretty good so and then I start coming down the blank coating the whole way and I'll end up pushing a lot of this uh, epoxy down towards the bottom so depending upon how it goes on uh, I will be able to See, it never fails. I said that in previous videos. Whenever I'm doing stuff, the phone rings. So when you guys call me and you realize that, or that you don't get an answer, this is what's going on. Just make sure it's not my full-time job. Nope. So if you get a, if you call me and something's going on, and and uh, you just get voicemail, this is what happens. It, it's it's Murphy's law. Whenever you're working on a rod, it always happens. So we've got the epoxy all the way down the rod. What I'm going to do now is try to position this so that you can see the blank and I'm not hiding it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work this down, getting epoxy coated all the way down while we're doing it. You see I've got paper towels down on the floor. What that will do is just collect any of the epoxy that's left. Alright, so we're down to the bottom of the blank. I'll move that around a little bit just to make sure we've got it seated correctly. And let this epoxy come off onto the towel. And then what you need to do is take your butt cap that you're going to be putting onto the rod apply that for now temporarily I want to make sure that I've got as much cap onto the rod as possible and don't have any sticking off so that's as far as that will go on I just push that up a little bit making sure everything is nice and snug everything's on the rod right and then what I do is we'll put this down here for a second you can see all the epoxy that's all the way up and down the blank, so I'll need to get that off. So what I do is come over here. I've already got a pre-pile of uh, paper towels. And just start wiping 
and cleaning that blank, getting it all good and clean again. So I'm going to clean this, and while I'm cleaning this, I'm going to put the video on hold so we can get to the next step, which will be the real seat application. So you guys stay tuned, and uh, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I lied a little bit. Um, on this rod, we're doing something that's a little bit different than what I normally do, unless it's requested by the customer. Uh, we are putting on a uh, PVC shrink tube over these grips. The reason is that the customer, when he holds a rod, he gets sweaty palms and they get slimy. So we're trying to minimize the effect of that as much as possible, and we're going to try these uh, the shrink wrap on here to see if that'll work. So what I'm going to do now is apply the heat to that to get that down in the right position. Uh, we've got everything in place as best as we can. Now we're just going to rely on this material going down in the correct position. So what you do is you actually just, it's the only time I'll ever have a heat gun on my workbench, I don't agree with them, I don't think they should be here, um, simply because everything that you wear, we work with in fishing rods is flammable. So um, I don't think that there's a, a good place for it anywhere on the bench, but you need it with this heat, heat shrink tubing. So I'm going to apply the heat to this, and get this to go down. So I'm going to continue working down the rest of the way and uh, you guys hang tight and I'll be back to you shortly. Alright guys, I'm back. Uh, what I've done now is the heat shrink material has been applied to the rear grip and I've already prepped the surface area for the reel seat. Uh, normally what we have to do with the reel seat is have to work with it a little bit to get it to fit down to the size of the rod we're using. This thing is so beefy, I'm using a size 24 reel seat and it's going to fit without a bushing. So uh, it's very simple in this instance. All you do is you rough up the area with a file. Um, don't go into the blank, but just go into the finish to, to give yourself some increased surface area. Uh, and then apply your finish over top. You'll notice here that I put tape on the threads of the reel seat so that we don't damage any of those. Stop short just a little bit so that I can take off a lot of the excess epoxy. I don't want that to get all up in the grip itself or the threads. So I'll take a lot of that off. This is one little trick that you use to, one of many, that you use to keep your finished edges neat. It's always a difficult thing to do. You're working with epoxy and you're getting it all over your hands and everywhere else. So to be able to Keep that edge as neat as possible is important. So what I'm going to do is work this all the way up in there to where it's going to sit. And that's where it's going to sit. The, uh, the difficult part now is what I have to do is work the PVC shrink tubing down underneath the real seat and basically lock it in between the... Uh, real seat and the foregrip itself. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of this tape. Now that the grip's in place, it will not be necessary for that. All right, and then we'll switch gears a little bit from this and take some scissors and sit here and start working that edge all the way down and having it tuck underneath of the real seat. It's little things that you can do to make the rod set apart that that make a custom rod truly a custom rod. So I mean, we always do what we can to make our work a little bit different than others. So 
So I'm going to have to work on this a little bit. But again, you get the idea of what's going on. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome trying to get this to be a nice finished seam because you're working with a lot of uh, chemicals here that are in the way, um, like epoxies and, and that type of thing. So um, just take a little bit of play in order to get that down nice. But what you need to do before you do this is spine your blank. Forgive me for walking in front of the camera. Um, and I'll show you that real quickly as soon as I get this one set. Spining the blank is, is one of the most important things that you can do in the build of a custom fishing rod. Every blank has an edge or a seam that will want to bend easier than another edge uh, or another uh, angle around the 360 degrees. So um, now that this is set, I will sit that aside and let that harden up a bit and then I'll come back and address that seam there. So what we do when we have a rod that, has, that needs to have a spine done on it, every rod that I, that I build gets built on the spine. Uh, if the blank's not straight, uh, well, let me back up. There's people who have an argument who say if the, uh, if the rod uh, is straight, you build on the straightest axes. Um, I don't believe in that uh, a little bit. And there are some very big names in the industry who say that. My philosophy is if I'm going to be building a rod and taking the time to do everything right, then I am going to uh, build it on the spine. This right here is a spine finder. Spine finder is used by putting the blank into the rear end, rear portion of the machine. And bending the blank, and I'll get down here at the end so that you can see, and bending the blank while you're rotating it, you can see that the blank wants to jump to a particular position. If you've ever been offshore fighting a fish that's had the rod maxed out and the rod starts twisting in your hands and the guides look like they want to go to the bottom of the rod. The reason for that is because the rod was not spined correctly. Um, every single blank on the market today has a spine. It may be delicate, it may be very hard to find, but there is a spine there. So you can see with this blank jumping that it has a spine to it. Um, so what we will do in this instance, we would either build on the spine for a uh, conventional rod or a spiral wrap rod. We would start out on top. If it's a spinning rod, we go to 180 degrees opposite and work our way up the bottom of the blank. Um, so again, I'm going to use this as the, take this liberty to use this as my pulpit a little bit. My feeling on the whole matter is that if you're going to take the time to build a rod, you're going to do it right. There's no sense building a car and not tuning the transmission before you put your uh, gas in it and try to go down the highway. And that's what you're doing here. You're fine-tuning, you're balancing the rod so that it will perform optimally for you. If the blank's not straight, take it back and get another blank. Don't sit there and try and build on the straightest axis. I just That's something that's one of my pet peeves and um, I'll get off it now. But I, I, I can't stress enough, every custom made rod needs to be spined. Um, get that spine, get that blank to where it wants to move up and down correctly every time, you're going to have a nice quality optimum rod. So um, that's it for now. I'm going to let that cure and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and put the foregrip and the heat shrink over the foregrip tomorrow and uh, the build will continue. So uh, stay tuned.